A new cap? This guy? The power broker? A new falcon? Falcon and the Winter Soldier has concluded and wow. Just wow. At first, you know, I was questioning how they would tell the story with only six episodes. But then again, Walking Dead did it in their first season. The first episode of the series follows Sam Wilson and Bucky after the events of Endgame. Pretty much just trying to reintegrate into society. Falcon has a brief run-in with Batroc, that French asshole from the Winter Soldier who I thought was dead. And yes, it's GSP. He's back. Batroc's literally like a C-list villain. I don't know, they used a lot of like C-list villains for this show. So they fight in a plane, and then the plane crashes. And then Batroc floats away in like a wingsuit, like a little bitch. Sam then heads to Louisiana to help his sister fix up their parents' boat so they can sell it. Because they're trying to save her house from foreclosure. Meanwhile, Bucky seeks counseling about his time as the Winter Soldier and tries to make amends with the people that he wronged. So after what seems like not much thought at all, Sam gives up his shield to the Smithsonian for their new Steve Rogers exhibit. I mean... They literally just hand it off to the government right after that, and then they just make a new Captain America. Yep, that's what I said. Apparently they can't go five minutes without having a Captain America, so... Episode 2 introduces us to John Walker, an army soldier with three medals of honor who has been hand-selected by the government to replace Steve Rogers as Captain America. Just because, with all the other Avengers we have now... They felt the need to have another one, I guess. I don't know. Oh, and of course, can't forget about Battlestar, which is his sidekick, Lamar. Originally, I thought this guy's name was like Star Power, but then I realized he's just not important enough for me to remember his name. So, yeah. And I guess he's in the comics, but who really cares? So the power immediately goes to Walker's head, and he starts to refer to himself only as Captain America, something Steve would never have done. We then meet a group of radicals named the Flag Smashers, who are hell-bent on making the world as it was during the blip, which was the time before Hulk snapped and brought everyone back. The SRC, an organization put together to help reintegrate the blipped people back into society, was their main target. So the leader of the radicals is named Carly Morgantho, a misguided youth with misguided intentions. Being one herself, the Flag Smashers are made up of pretty much a bunch of super soldiers who were given a new variation of the serum by the mysterious Power Broker. Who is it? We don't know. I have an idea, though. We're introduced to Sam's friend, Joaquin Torres, who's also in the military and helping to track down the Flag Smashers. But he gets his ass kicked, like, pretty early on by one of them. Sam and Bucky meet up to trail the group, only for Walker and Lamar to intervene and try to do it their own way. In episode 3, believing that Hydra could very well be behind the Flag Smashers, Sam and Bucky enlist the help of Baron Zemo. Yes, you heard me right. Due to his knowledge of super soldiers and Hydra, he could prove to be an asset. So they head to Madripoor to meet up with none other than Sharon Carter, who has been in hiding ever since the events of Civil War. In exchange to clear her name with the American government, she helps them get to the scientist that recreated the serum. Of course then, fuckery occurs and there's a huge shootout ending with the scientist getting killed. Pretty much anybody who ever makes like a super soldier serum just gets killed like immediately. Episode 4 has the Dora Milaje, which is the Wakandan army, 
and they've come to take back Zemo for killing T'Chaka. Walker, or should I say Captain America, engages in battle with one of them, like an idiot, and he gets his ass kicked, like, really bad. He almost cries. Sam meets with Carly to try to talk her down and defuse the whole situation, only for Walker to be an impatient asshole and rush in, causing more fuckery. Zemo smashes all the remaining vials of the serum, except for one, which Walker finds and then takes himself. Yeah, because you find an experimental vial of some chemical on the ground, and the first thing I would think to do is inject it into my arm. Later, they meet back up with Carly and the Flag Smashers, who have now captured Lamar. They manage to rescue him, but then Carly, like, Sparta kicks him into a pillar and breaks his back. Walker is pretty much in denial and shakes him violently for, like, 30 minutes trying to wake him up. Bro, he, he, he's gone. Le leave him alone. Come on now. And then, filled with rage, he storms after the group and kills Carly's number two guy, who had nothing to do with Lamar's death, and, funny enough, was, like, Captain America's biggest fan growing up. So, irony. Oh yeah, and by the way, it's in front of, like, everybody, so they film it TMZ style. What a crazy asshole. Here you go, America. Here's your new cap. In the beginning of part five, Bucky and Sam confront Walker to take the shield back, and he's not really about that life. So they just have to kick his ass and take it. After the fight, Sam's wings are broken, and then he hands them off to Joaquin Torres. I think this is hinting at the fact that Joaquin will become the next Falcon. Because in the comics, he is. But he's like some weird, different, like, bird-looking version. I don't know. It's like a bird person from Rick and Morty. Something like that. Sam talks with Isaiah Bradley, a soldier who underwent experimentation with another form of the serum but become the next Steve Rogers. They did the experiment on like a hundred African American people and I guess Bradley was the only one that survived. But he did accomplish a lot of shit. He rescued like a bunch of POWs and stuff, same as like Rogers did. But just because he was black, they discredited him and threw him in prison and tortured him and like a bunch of horrible shit. So no one ever knew about anything that he did. So Walker's put to trial and stripped of the mantle of Captain America. He's then approached by the chick from Seinfeld and recruited to help her team, which everybody thinks is Hydra, because in the comic book, I guess her name is Lady Hydra. Um, I don't know, she's got like four names. It's, it's really complicated. But I'm guessing she's working for Ross, and they're going to like start to build the Thunderbolts. Just, a, just an idea, just an idea. Calm down. So the Dora Milaje show back up, and Zemo just surrenders himself to them, and they take him to the raft, which is that prison from Civil War that all of Cap's team were on. The episode ends with the Flag Smashers taking the SRC board members hostage. And then after the credits, we see Walker start to make his own shield. Oh shit, about to go down. And now we're at the finale. It starts off with Falcon, now sporting the shield and new Cap suit, courtesy of Wakanda. More accurately, Shuri, probably. He battles the Flag Smashers and, oh look, Batrock. This guy doesn't give up, man, he's like everywhere. You'll never be relevant, bro, just, just stop it. It turns into an all-out war as Carly and the group refuse to back down. Even Walker shows up with his bootleg shield and helps out, surprisingly on the side of good. They manage to thwart the group with the help of Sharon, who just conveniently shows up out of nowhere. She tells Carly that she let her down. That's strange. Well, it's probably because she supplied them with the serum because guess what? Sharon is the fucking power broker. Boom! In the other video, I was like, there's no way Sharon would be tied to the power broker. But guess what? She was. Anyway, so Carly tries to kill Sam and is shot dead by Carter. Leaving Sam and Bucky none the wiser of her true colors. Yeah, great. That's not going to lead to fuckery later on. After everything is said and done, the SRC accepts Sam as the new Captain America, and Sharon is pardoned for all her involvement in Civil War. Bucky finally finishes the list of people he wronged. Walker is given a new suit by Lady Hydra, or whatever she calls herself, and he is dubbed the U.S. Agent. Yeah, I know we were all waiting for that, so that's a great. In the end, Sam takes Isaiah Bradley to the Steve Rogers exhibit to unveil a new area dedicated to his heroics, thus cementing his place as Captain America in history. 
In the final moments, Sharon makes a call to an anonymous person stating that now she has access to all the government secrets and weapons, leading into the new Cap movie. That's right, bitch. Marvel immediately greenlit a fourth Cap movie with Sam. I'm guessing the plot will probably have something to do with him taking down Sharon. And of course, I think the person she's talking to is Secretary Ross, who, like I said, is creating an anti-Avengers team called the Thunderbolts. I'm fairly certain that Lady Hydra works for him, and they plan to have U.S. Agent lead the team. In addition to that, it was reported a while back that Zemo, Ghost, Taskmaster, Abomination, and even Justin Hammer were part of the team. And you know Ross will make an appearance in the Black Widow film, probably to recruit Taskmaster. They did say that Black Widow film is tied to this show somehow. And not only are we getting a new movie, but there will also be a season 2 of this show, so that's pretty awesome. Overall, I thought this series was great. The MCU has not disappointed so far with the Disney Plus shows. Alright guys, peace!